G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. As you may be aware, we've been keeping our own mock Brownlow count throughout the 2019 season, as we were publicly releasing the results of the count throughout the first half of the season on our social media. During the second half of the year, however, we decided to keep the votes private until the end of the home and away season. So in this video, I'll be taking you through our own abbreviated Brownlow medal count round by round. The season kicked off with the traditional Richmond Carlton game, where Tiger skipper Trent Cochin led the way for his side with the best on ground performance with 31 possessions. Tim Kelly was prominent as the Cats stunned the Magpies, while Stephen Cornelia won True Footy Player of the Round with 3 goals and 31 possessions. In round 2, we saw Trelaw and Dugowie tear the hapless Tigers apart. The Giants were on the receiving end of Luke Shuey and the West Coast Eagles in Perth, while Lockie Neal staked his early Brownlow claim with a monster 43 possession performance against the Roos. The following week, Pat Dangerfield helped put the Crows to the sword at their home ground, and it appeared the Cats were the early benchmark side of the competition. Andrew Gaff also polled three votes in his return game from suspension as the Eagles won the grand final rematch from last year. In round four, the Giants stunned the highly fancied Cats down at GMHBA, with Stephen Cornelio earning three votes for his 34 disposals. Jack Billings also continued his bright start to the season, earning two votes as the Saints upset the Hawks. So let's take a look at the leaderboard after the first four rounds of football. We have a surprise leader in Jack Billings with nine votes, while Dangerfield, Bolgenpelli, Whitfield and Pat Cripps all share second spot with eight votes each. In round five, we saw the Lions receive an almighty reality check against the Magpies at the Gabba, with Adam Trelaw best of field with 35 possessions in the 10 goal win. Ollie Wines and Port Adelaide beat up on a flat Eagles side, while Jack Billings earned another three votes with two goals and 28 possessions and the Saints smashed the Demons. The following week the Eagles were belted again, this time by Dangerfield and his fellow Cats. Travis Bowe continued his brilliant start to the season against North Melbourne, while Scott Pendlebury put in a famous Anzac Day performance that will be remembered for the wrong reasons. In round 7, the Demons finally returned to the winners list as Max Gorn collected 46 hitouts against the Hawks, while Jeremy Cameron kicked 6 goals against the Saints to stake his early claim for Coleman Medal favouritism. Round 8 saw the Dockers lose to the Tigers at home, although in typical fashion, Nat Fife collected 3 votes with a 3 goal, 33 possession game. On the other side of the country, Tim Kelly's 2 goals and 36 possessions saw him claim 3 votes in Geelong's win over North Melbourne. So a quick look at the round 8 leaderboard and we have a new leader in Tim Kelly. His teammate Pat Dangerfield shares second spot with Jack Billings, while Trelaw and Cripps round out the top 5. In round 9, the Lions beat the Crows in a thriller at the Gabba, and Lockie Neal's 39 possessions saw him claim 3 votes to jump to equal top in the Brownlow count. Travis Boke again picked up 3 votes in the Powers win over the Suns, while Elliot Yeo continued his ascension to becoming an elite midfielder with 3 votes against the Demons. On Friday night in round 10, Brody Grundy put on a clinic with 64 hitouts against the Swans. In the same round, Elliot Yeo made it 9 votes from 3 games while Tim Kelly shot into outright first place with 35 possessions against the Gold Coast Suns. Round 11 saw the Roos and Ben Cunnington shock the Tigers with a 6 goal win, whilst Travis Boke was dominant again in China against the Saints. Round 12 was the first of the bye rounds, and the Tigers were slaughtered mercilessly once again this time by Pat Dangerfield and Geelong. Pat Cripps also put in one of the best individual performance all season with a 4 goal, 38 possession clinic against the Brisbane Lions. So after 12 rounds, Geelong teammates Dangerfield and Kelly sit in 1st and 2nd place in the count. In 3rd place is surprise man Travis Boke, while media favourite Lockie Neal sits in 4th spot. In round 13, the Crows belted to the Tigers as Brad Crouch shot into the top 5 with 3 votes. Ricky Henderson earned three votes in a loss to Essendon, while Charlie Curnow's bag of seven goals earned him best on ground against the Bulldogs. The following week, Dom Sheed's two goals and 36 possessions against the Bombers earned him three votes, while Luke Parker put in a monster performance as the Swans upset the Hawks. Later in the round, Robbie Gray's two goals and 31 possessions helped the power end Geelong's run of good form. Round 15 saw the Bombers stake a realistic finals claim with a one goal win over the Giants, while Tim Kelly helped himself to another three votes with two goals and 33 possessions against the Crows. In round 16, Stephen Cornelio earned three votes in a losing cause against Brisbane, despite getting injured. Aaron Norton's bag of four helped the Dogs stun the Cats, while Jason Castagna led a Richmond onslaught against the Suns with five goals and 18 possessions. So it's time once again to look at the leaderboard and we have a new leader in Stephen Cornelio, who is about to miss the rest of the regular season due to injury. Tim Kelly and Lockie Neal sit immediately behind, 
while Pat Dangerfield and Adam Trelaw remain heavily in the mix. Fremantle's Nat Fife has begun to make a slow charge up the leaderboard, slotting into ninth spot. In round 17, Fremantle skipper Nat Fife once again polled three votes in a losing cause, kicking three goals as his side went down to Hawthorne. Meanwhile, Eddie Betts and Ben Brown kicked six goals each as their sides experienced mixed fortunes. In round 18, the Lions scored an important win over the Roos at home, with Jared Lyons collecting three votes for his two goals and 30 possessions. Jack Billings earned best on ground honours as the Saints upset the Dogs, while Liam Shields took three Brownlow votes as the Hawks stunned the Cats. The next week, the Tigers flogged the Pies on Friday night to exact revenge for last year's prelim, and Dusty Martin led the way with two goals and 38 possessions. Jack McRae led the Bulldogs in an onslaught over the Dockers, while Dylan Shield helped his side avoid an embarrassing loss to the Gold Coast Suns. In round 20, Port Adelaide's Dan Houston was best on ground in his side's huge win over the Bombers, while Adam Trelaw earned three more votes in his side's convincing win over the Gold Coast at the MCG. Jack McRae was monstrous in his side's loss to Brisbane, earning the three votes in that game as well. So with three rounds to go, Adam Trelaw has taken the outright lead in the overall leaderboard. He sits just ahead of Tim Kelly and Lockie Neal, while Jack McRae has made a late season charge to be within striking distance. For the last three weeks, I'll show the leaderboard round by round. In round 21, several contenders won three vote performances. Adam Trelaw had 31 possessions against the Demons, Nat Fife had two goals and 35 possessions, and Pat Dangerfield had 33 possessions and a goal in a big win. So as a result, Trelaw extends his lead to two votes, Pat Dangerfield storms into second while Nat Fife is now fourth overall. Despite his side losing to the Lions at the Gabba, Pat Dangerfield earned again three votes for a one goal, 36 possession performance. The suspended Dustin Martin won three votes against the Eagles, although of course he is not actually eligible for this award. So with one round to go, Pat Dangerfield has taken the lead in the overall count, and it becomes a three horse race with only Adam Trelaw and Jack McRae able to win the award from Danger. As it would happen, Dangerfield put in one of his most dominant performances all year in the final round of the season, kicking four goals and amassing 34 possessions in his side's big win over Carlton. He finishes the year with 30 overall votes, winning by four over the next best in Adam Trelaw to take home his second career Brownlow medal. So here is the overall top 10, which I feel is fairly indicative of who the best midfielders this season have truly been. But the mock Brownlow medal isn't the only award we have to give in this video. Throughout the season, the four of us at True Footy have been voting on our own Player of the Year award, and the results are as follows. As a bit of a surprise, Brody Grundy has taken out the award with 84 votes, comfortably ahead of Nat Fife and Jeremy Cameron in second and third spot. Given the Brownlow hasn't been a Ruckman's award in recent years, it is fitting that Grundy is recognised by us as one of the very best players in this competition. This is also a good time to acknowledge the winners of the other True Footy awards this season. Chad Booth has won our AFL Fantasy League, scoring an average of 22-15 points around and ranking 220th in the country. In our footy tipping competition, Dave O'Gangel won overall with 133 correct tips during the regular season. Congratulations to those boys on those fantastic efforts. Anyway guys, thanks for watching another video on the True Footy YouTube channel. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe for plenty of regular AFL content. Thanks guys, bye for now.